from the time I moved to Des Moines, I always had a studio outside of my home for painting. I realized when sticks started taking over my painting space that I needed a bigger space for sticks and a separation with my paintings. But probably the thing that I didn't know anything about is production art with employees. But made it through from the mid 80s all the way up to 99 when I bought this piece of property on the southwest side of Des Moines and proceeded to build this building for two reasons. One was for the efficiency of production so that if you are efficient, you can make a profit. And two, not making this second to production so that anyone who worked here was safe and had a really wonderful environment to be creative in. So this building was pretty much prompted by the growth of sticks and the desire to do good business as I was learning how to do business. The drawing department is pretty much where I have worked my whole life at Sticks, with the exception of the beginning days when I was truly alone and I had a guy in his garage cutting out wood pieces for me or my dad when he wasn't working. And then I would just freehand draw with the wood burner and then quick paint it, varnish it, put it in a box, ship it, and bill whoever was getting it. So I started out by myself until my hand was falling off, and then I started to hire people. But out of that process, I think the process I prefer the most personally is the drawing, because that's where you're telling the story. These two started in painting, and I did all the drawing alone, and then as time proceeded, I couldn't keep all that up with the volume of work that we were doing and knew exactly that Amy needed to be in drawing. She's phenomenal, and then followed by Michelle, who's quite cross-trained to do both um, drawing and painting and just about anything there is to do in the building. These two are my replacement. These two are my team. So if I'm not here, they can do anything. If they're not here, I can do anything. That is a key in any business, but it's kind of a weird one in the arts. I mean, everybody wants to think Sarah Grant's here 24-7, uh, making and touching every single piece. That's impossible when you get to this volume. So that puts this art studio in a very unique place. There are not a lot of spots in America where Handmade has this big of an operation and produces this much volume. And one of the reasons that, can, that has happened here is that literally thousands and thousands of artists have gone through this building assisting and learning and producing. We had a conversation in the studio about the fact that what is going on there is applied arts. Probably as a defiant thing, as a young person out of high school, there was no way I was going to be an applied artist. I thought that the intellectual highbrow direction to go was to become a fine artist and draw and print and paint, which not only did I do this because I just thought applied art was secondary, like really kind of a snob, uh, but I wanted to draw, I wanted to paint, I wanted to make prints. I went into my first painting class. I had always gotten A's everywhere I went as an artist, but in my first painting class, I got a D. The guy said I was completely out of control and wasn't listening to him, and I wasn't. But um, that was very, like, a stab in the heart. And so I just said, okay, I'm not gonna be a painter. I'll be a drawer. Well, the printmaking department saw my drawings and said, oh my gosh, you need to be a printmaker. So I worked at Colorado State with the guys who had graduated from University of Iowa. Went off to Iowa City to major in drawing and printmaking for my MA and worked with Lazansky. It was the 70s and I was pretty driven. It was a pretty chauvinistic department in those years. Mm, a lot of art departments were. Totally frustrating. I wanted to be a teaching assistant. I wanted um, to be able to run the presses and print the professor's prints, but the, very few women got that opportunity. 
So I worked really hard on my prints and crossed the river into painting where in printmaking, even though I was a mature printmaker for a student being in the master's program and having had four previous years in printmaking, printmaking is so much about process and so much about getting that process right that I really think I had a mind block about what am I telling? What, what is the content of my work? What is, what, what's my story here? And so going into the painting department was incredibly freeing for me. Most of my prints were just like somewhere between abstract and landscape or still life or whatever. I didn't know who I was or what I was doing. By the time I got to painting and could just have this immediate freedom, um, I started to tell stories with paint. I was scared to death to be over there, but um, John Dilg, wonderful, wonderful professor, David Dunlap, the whole crew in the late 70s in the, at the Iowa painting department were fabulous. John said to me, just stop worrying about the fact that you've never stretched a canvas, you've never worked on canvas, just stop with that and recognize that your entire college career you've worked on paper. So just paint on paper. Just cut some paper, put it on the wall, and start painting. So from that moment on until very recently, which is, well that would have been the late 70s, all the way up until I made the switch to Moberg Gallery, my works have primarily been on paper. Get a broken heart when I see stacks and stacks of, of really bad paintings under the bed and or in the corner that never sold or came back from the gallery. So through the years I have overpainted a lot of really bad paintings and turned them into beauties. I've also torn them up and collaged them into my work. So that's the process part that kind of connects to the A to Z that happens at Sticks. I love the process probably more than I love the fin finished piece. Once a piece goes off to the gallery, I forget all about it. Once I say I'm done with it, I forget all about it. Because the act of making things is why I'm an artist.